I should have brought Porky. He could have just sat right there. Good show. Good show. And welcome to the dog show with uh, Nick and Joe. Nick is still out in Austin. Sean, yeah. he uh, I believe he gets back sometime this weekend. He is out there finishing up his seminar with Miss Mia Khalifa, which is I don't know if you know this. She's an entertainer. Sean told me. Yep, yeah, she's in the show business. We'll say um, he he does have both of. The before after videos up on uh, on the Facebook page, so check those out. And I am joined today with Miss Nancy Gwynn. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. She is a certified pet nutritionist and owner of Dog Crazy. Yes. Which is here in Fredericksburg. Yes, in Stafford and Spotsylvania and Richmond. You guys are growing like crazy, like yeah? Crazy, yeah. We're scouting out five and six right now. Tell me a little bit about Dog Crazy. Um, so I opened Dog Crazy almost 12 years ago. I had a bulldog that I was madly in love with. Um, she passed away almost two years ago. But um, I worked in the medical field, and my boss told me she couldn't come to work with me. So I quit my job. Uh, I drove to downtown Fredericksburg. There was a store that had been here for 10 years. And right when I pulled up in front of the store, she put up store closing. And I went inside. Um, funny thing was, I was actually in school to become a dog trainer at the time. I had one week left. And uh, I talked to the owner of the store, and she said, you know, if you want a dog store here, then open one. I went to school that night for dog training, and my teacher told me that I stink at dog training. That I oh, love no. dogs. I'm oh, great no. with people, but I don't have the discipline to train a dog. So okay. um, I quit school and opened up Dog Crazy, and 12 years later, here and I it's, am. And yeah. it, it kicks ass, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. I believe you guys won best of... Fredericksburg yeah. last year? Two years in a row now. Two yeah. years in a row now. We're up for number three, right? Oh, yeah. Awesome. And uh, Nancy and Dog Crazy are definitely big partners of us here at Off Leash Canine Training in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, we we work with them quite a bit. We've actually trained uh, one of Nancy's yeah. dogs. and. Stir-fry fat guy. Stir-fry fat guy is his name. How many dogs do you have? How many pets do you have? I have four. And well, I have four dogs, a pig, a bird, and a cat. Four dogs, a pig, a bird, and a cat. Yes. Now, listen to the names of her dogs, guys. Go ahead. All right, so I've got Stir Fry Fat Guy, my Mastiff mix. Okay. I have Pork Wonton, my bulldog. Sushi is my beagle. Tala is my bull mastiff puppy, which um, it's a Tagalog name. My mom's Filipino, so that goes back to the dog thing. Sure. Um, and then Jimmy Dean is my pot belly pig. And then I have a bird named Max and a cat named Ozzy who don't really get in the mix, but. And anyways. and I've I've been to your house and she's not she's not lying she has mm-hmm. a pig yeah. that actually uses <laughs> the doggy door comes in and out and hangs out with the dogs yeah yeah actually it was funny when you and Kelly were at the house the pig walked inside and your face was just I I, I wish I had a picture because you were like like he lives outside right I was like no he lives inside yeah the pig yeah. just kind of hangs out inside and yeah your wife touched his bits. And, yeah, and she rubbed his belly, and that's where his little boy part is. Kelly yeah. touched his bit, so yeah. uh, he loves her. Called <laughs> a, call, calling out Kelly for touching the pig's bits. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doll Crazy's been open open for twelve years, and tell us about yourself. You uh, you got certified in pet nutrition. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, well, when we first opened, I really wasn't doing much with dog food. It was more of a boutique. We carried a few lines. Um, 2007, there was a huge pet food recall. So we started looking in. Luckily, we were not affected. The lines that we carried, nothing was affected. Um, We started looking and bringing in more and more food because more and more people started coming to us. Um, I had one customer, Nina. She had a dog, Obi, that was allergic to everything. So we were trying to figure out what he could eat. And we finally figured out that venison was the thing that would be great for him. She went back to her work and she told them, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start feeding him raw. And they were against it. And she came back to me and she said, you know, you should go to school for this. You really should figure this out. So I started looking at programs, and at that point we were pretty small. We were in a tiny space. It was just me who worked the store, so I started school while I worked the store. So Mm -hmm. I found an online program. It was a three-year program that I could do to get certified in pet nutrition. So I finished that um, about two years ago. It took me a while. It took me a lot longer because we had sick dogs and things that happened where I had to postpone for a little bit. But it was worth it. I have vets that recommend me all the time. Um, I work with them on different cases, so they actually trust me now because I've gone through the schooling. And how difficult was the schooling? 
For me, it was really hard. Yeah. Um, I'm not a book learner. I, I have a hard time Same. processing things with books. I have to, I'm hands on. So like I've had dogs that have had cancer. I've had dogs that have heart disease, kidney disease, diabetes. Those are the ones that I 100%, I know 1000%, but I learn new things every day. I mean, I'm always reading books about nutrition. I'm always going to advanced education on nutrition. You can never stop learning. Okay. Very cool. Um, well, welcome to have you on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so I want to jump into our show sponsor which is uh, DemonAbitesuits.com, owner Chris Pell out there in Colorado. Um, huge shout out to those guys. They are the absolute best. Uh, we have a couple of custom suits made by them, and I get all my clatter sticks from them. We get our bite sleeves, our leg sleeves, uh, Kongs, everything. Uh, everything working dog, bite dog related. Uh, we get from Chris over at DemonetBiteSuits.com. Customer service is absolutely phenomenal. Chris is uh, a super, super great guy. Uh, he's always there to help you if you need him. They do have rush shipping on custom bite suits, which are made in Spain. And you can get them in about three to four weeks for an extra 125 bucks. So definitely worth that. Um, so thank you to DemonetBiteSuits.com for sponsoring the show. Uh, so I have some news stories, Nancy, I want to talk to you about. Oh, yeah, I don't watch news, but okay. I have a couple of them. Uh, number one, and this is pretty fitting for our topic today. Uh, this was posted by the New York Post, uh, dot com. Dog food brands recalled over concerns about euthanasia drug in the food. Now, this, I don't know, it seems absolutely insane to me. No, it's happened before. How in the hell can a euthanasia drug be mistakenly put into dog food because it's rendered pet meat so basically when animals pass away whether they're euthanized or not um, they have to do something with a with their bodies um, like if you go to the vet and you have your dog cremated nobody really knows what happens to your dog if you don't have it cremated where you know in the shelter where do those dogs go from what i'm told they're gone they go to rendering plants um, and of course that drug is going to be in their system if it's used for cheaper meats and cheaper dog foods. Um, the only bad part is we've, I've been through this at my store. I mean, last year I carried Avengers. Avengers was one of the first ones that was hit. As soon as I found out about it, I pulled the entire line, everything that they made, I pulled from my shelves. Um, we took, you know, we emailed every single customer. We got in touch with them to let them know what was going on. Luckily, nothing was affected that we had. We didn't have the batches in our store, but because that had happened, I took their entire line out and I did post about it on social media and made sure all my customers were aware. I apologized. It killed me that I had to do that because yeah. I've, I've met the owner of the company. She's a really nice lady. You know, she helped me when my dog was going through, when she had the tumor on her heart, she helped me find food that Piglet could eat and I fed it to Piglet, yeah. you know, so it, it, it hurt me, you know, but the difference is I took it off the shelves immediately. And and no. see that's kind of my question because we were talking about this in the uh, in the break room before the show started was there's there's quite a few recalls actually out right now mm -hmm. uh, with with dog food and we'll try to get the list together and um, either myself or Sean will will throw it up on the uh, dog show Facebook page so you guys are aware uh, of of what not to get right now um, and they're still up on shelves yeah the, I, I yeah the recall, recalled food still sitting on shelves in walmart and pet smart and stuff like that yeah what, what are there laws i mean you should be pulling it right away but i mean it's it's happened before though i've gone into a bigger box pet store and saw recalled food on the shelf and i've picked it up and i walked to the counter and i've told them i'm going to purchase this but it's been recalled is that okay and they've let me walk out of the store with it where I would never, wow. never allow that to happen. So are some recalls more serious than others? Yes. Meaning are some just kind of technicalities, yes. you know, and, and it's really not harmful if you continue to give to your dog, exactly. whereas some recalls could be life-threatening? Absolutely. That, so Absolutely. that is possible? Oh, yeah. Phenobarbital, that's one thing you don't want. They're saying that it's such low doses, it's not going to affect the dog. You can't tell me that. Every dog is different. Everybody digests differently. You know, but salmonella, that's more of a concern for humans than it is for dogs. They yeah. can process that bacteria better than we can. So, so if there's a salmonella recall, maybe not that big of a deal. I don't freak out over things like that. But the euthanasia medicine that yeah. that's in uh, this specific brand, which is J.M. Smucker Company. Yes. Um, and that's, they make a ton of lines of food. A yeah, ton. Kibble, they make my coffee. Kibbles and bits. I mean, that's yeah. that's pretty damn popular. Yeah. Uh, I don't. We don't use it, but. Um, no, you feed the best food out there. Thank you. Yeah, you that's do. what I was going to ask yeah, you about. You do. Awesome. Hands down. Awesome. Um, and which we're going to touch on here, but you know, the, 
just euthanasia medicine put in dog food. I mean, that that just seems dangerous as shit. Yeah. And it seems irresponsible and it seems something needs to be done about it, guys. Let's uh dog food companies out there, let's get our shit together and you know, I appreciate you putting out the recall, but let's be a little bit more careful, I would suggest. Look at your dog food label. If it doesn't name the protein, if it doesn't say chicken, if it doesn't say beef, if it says animal or meat, you don't know what you're feeding your dog. No clue. You could be feeding them something you just ran over on the road. Yeah. Don't feed that to your dog. Buy something better. Mm. All right. So that brings me into the next story, which is uh, I, I saw, I've seen this popping up ever since. Uh, uh, maybe about a month ago when they started talking about the Olympics and all that stuff being in uh, in South Korea, which is uh, they're very big on eating dog meat. Mm -hmm. um, so and then it popped up on uh, I was watching CNN maybe two nights ago and they did about a 10 minute segment on it, which is, you know, pretty big for CNN. And they were talking about the underground world of dog meat markets. Um, and this statistic right here absolutely blows my mind. 30 million dogs every single year are being slaughtered for their meat. 30 million dogs. That is insane. Yeah. I just... Sean. Yeah, but... But you have to ask how many cows are being slaughtered so we can eat meat. I mean, it's. I it's, mean, I get the I get the rebuttal question, but I mean, it's like what's accepted in yeah. society and what's not. You know, I can never eat my dog, but I do eat hamburger. So I'm, yeah. I'm contradicting myself right there. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you, and and I love you know eating meat just as much as the next person. Uh, you know, uh, but dog just doesn't seem. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't seem cat. right. And and on the CNN, um, and you can go online actually, and we'll put the link up to that as well. Uh, they did they put the whole segment up there, but they did a a video um, of them out there rescuing some of the dogs. I guess the International Humane Society is traveling to these uh, specifically right now in South Korea because that's where the spotlight's at with yeah. the Olympics going on. And the International Humane Society is traveling out to these uh, meat markets, uh, I guess if that's what you want to call them, and they're offering them, hey, look, we will start you a, uh, a vegetable farm. We'll, we'll get it all started. We'll pay for it. You just give us all of your dogs and sign this dotted line that says you will never do this again. And so I, I guess, uh, you know, a few of them have been doing it now couple of questions I have on that is so they sign the dotted line and the Humane Society leaves yeah who's to say they're not going to keep doing right that? then I mean, what then what I mean yeah. if they know that it makes them money yeah. are they really going to continue with the vegetable farm or are they going to go with what makes them more money you know so I feel like there needs to be um, international laws something I, I don't know. Something needs to happen to where th this has got to stop because they're showing the videos of full bred golden retrievers. Mm -hmm. And one of them was rescued, actually. And they have that uh, in the segment of a lady that, that rescued the golden retriever that was scheduled to be slaughtered for the meat. And I mean, just beautiful dog, you know, happy as hell in her new home. And this dog could have been on somebody's plate. Yeah, but it's the same with pigs. Have you seen how pigs are taking it? They, they keep them in cages that literally fit around their body. And yeah. I see that, and then I see Jimmy Dean laying in front of the fireplace in my house. Yeah. And it's like, it, they're both animals. They're both living creatures. So if we do it for dogs, we should do it for everything. No, I mean, I, I see your point on that. But to me, it comes down to, again, what, what society accepts and what they do not accept as a whole. Your yeah. wife rubbed my pig's belly. I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, Putting that out there. <laughs> I, 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 I get it. I get the argument. It, just something says to me that dogs should not be food. I, I agree. I agree 1,000%. And uh, what, what really surprised me is that there is actually a fairly big market in the United States. It's an underground market, but there is a large market uh, in the States. Uh, that are doing the exact same thing. 
I, yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Um, one of the, uh, they did an undercover investigation on it, and one of the most popular place uh, that is doing this underground uh, meat market for dogs is, you could be shocked, you cannot be, it doesn't matter, but it's Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So I'm just going to uh, leave that right there and uh, move on. Don't eat out <laughs> when you're in Lancaster. How many dogs? 30 million total. 30 million. So a quick, a quick thing on Google says that there's an estimated 78 million just in the U.S. So, so 78 million dogs in the U.S., mm-hmm. But now this is 30 million in the world. But I mean, that's still uh, it's 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 a substantial number, man. It's a crazy fucking number. And I I, when I'm watching the story, I'm like, what can I do about this? And did you hear about the thing in Stafford like years ago? There's a a restaurant in Stafford. They found cats. I did not. In the kitchen there. Yeah. There was like like live cats. No, they weren't alive anymore. They were using them for cooking. Yeah. There's one restaurant. I don't eat there. Um, but I used to work in the, actually my stores near it in the, I used to work at, I used to manage the dental office next to where my Stafford store is, but it would happen when I was back there. But wow. yeah, they were known for using cats. Those people make the joke all the time. If you have a cat and need to rehome, you know, take it to a oh, Chinese restaurant. No. It's not. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to tell me what that place is yeah. so I don't go there yeah. after the show. Yeah. Um, all right. So there's the news stories for the day. I, I don't know what we can do if there's anything that we can do. Um, I kind of feel like something should be done, but I just don't know what. So I'm lost on this. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, throw them out there because uh, it's absolutely disgusting. So anyhow, moving on, let's get on to our main topic today, which is uh, dog nutrition. This is uh, something that a lot of folks have been asking about uh, in the last several weeks. They want to. Uh, they wanted to have somebody who knew what the hell they were talking about and I, nor Nick, am the guys when it comes to dog nutrition. I, I'll be honest with all of you guys, I, I pretty much feed what Nancy tells us to feed our <laughs> dogs, um, which is we feed our dogs uh, Akana. Yeah. That's the correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Akana, and it's the lamb um, blend, I lamb guess. Apple. Yep, lamb apple um, blend ingredients. You used to do whatever. duck, though. Why'd you switch? I think we tried the duck, and then one of the boys didn't um, take to it very okay. well. And then the lamb, all of them absolutely loved that. Okay. Um, and you know what's really cool about the Akana is I know it's really good food because you've told me I can read all the ingredients. I've been there. I've seen the food made. Yeah, I've, I've read all the ingredients on the back of the, uh, on the, on the label, and I can understand and, and actually pronounce all of them. So I would assume that's a good thing. Um, but what I really like about it is I can really control their weight, uh, whether I need to go up or whether I need to go down with that food, um, with other foods that we've had in the past, it's been a little bit difficult to kind of monitor their weight and, and get it right where I want it with the conage. And I don't know if this is pure coincidence, but it seems if I have a dog that I feel like is slightly overweight a little bit, you know, maybe uh, he hasn't been getting enough exercise because the weather's been kind of crappy. I can adjust his feeding, you know, just by a little bit. And for maybe a week or two, I can actually notice the difference yeah. uh, based off of, you know, what we're feeding him. So, uh, so a con is good. Yeah, it's a great food. And you, you've been, you said you've been to. Have, I have actually been to their kits. The kitchen is what they call it. It's Dog Star Kitchen. We actually won a competition where four people from my store were able to go and watch the food being made. We got to go fishing with them and actually catch the fish that they use in the food. We went to the farms and saw where all the botanicals were grown. So we learned a lot about the food. And we went down there for a few days. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad to know that. So keep doing it then, huh? Yeah, yeah we're going to Fromm in uh, July. We just found out that we're going to be going to Fromm and we'll be able to see their, their facilities and see where their food's made. So we're actually seeing where all of this comes from. I think that's kind of cool that they're sending out invites going, hey, look, we stand by our product. Yeah. Come watch it, you know, come yeah. watch it be made. Because I would have to assume there's there's a few companies out there that won't let you. That are like, no, nah, we're good. <laughs> no, no. And- <laughs> we're good, fam. What's that? Restaurants don't want you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Restaurants don't want you in the kitchen. So, yeah. Foodie you know. lets you. You get to watch Foodie cook. Theirs is open. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. so give me a rundown. Give me a rundown on the essentials of what you should be feeding your dogs. 
When you look at your dog's food, whether you feed kibble, you feed raw, you feed canned, just read the ingredients. If there's something you don't know what it is, don't feed it to your dog. It's, it's that simple. If it says byproducts. If, so is that really the case? If yeah. you can't read it? If you don't know what it is, don't feed it to your dogs. If it says meat or if it says animal, you don't know what it is. You know, even with things that I carry, if it says natural flavor, we call the company to find out what that natural flavor is so we can explain it to our customers. I don't want any guessing games when it comes to the food that we carry. I want to know everything that's in it, where it comes from. So if you walk into one of my stores, we have labels under all the food that we carry. Mm -hmm. And on those labels, it says what's in the bag. It says it very easily for you to read. But we also put what the calcium is, what the phosphorus is. It's really important for large breed dogs, especially large breed puppies. When you flip that card over, it says the carbohydrate content on there. They don't label that either. So we do all the math for you so you know exactly what you're feeding your dogs. And here's a big question that I have. Do you always go by the instructions on the back of the bag? No, absolutely not. Those are recommended. So I tell people those are based on your I, – I, I use Border Collie as an example. It's a high-energy dog. Mm -hmm. um, but like Piglet, my bulldog, the food that I was feeding her, she was feeding on his kitchen. It recommended that I feed her two cups a day. She had one cup a day. If she had to give her two cups, she got up to 53 pounds. She was too heavy. 48 was a good weight for her. So she would get one cup of food a day, and then I supplemented by adding a few other things in. But it's, it's a recommended. It's not every dog. Every dog metabolizes differently. Nobody metabolizes the same. So Now, you sent me a picture. Was it yesterday or this morning of what you feed your dogs? Oh, my dogs, yeah. And, oh, and my man. pig. My pig's in there, too. I felt like the laziest piece of shit ever <laughs> when I saw what Nancy feeds her dogs. I'm like, because all my dogs get a Kana, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> you should add moisture to their food. So yeah. what? Do you, tell me, tell me, give me your diets for each dog. I want to know. And my pig. Okay. So and Jim, your pig. Jimmy Dean. He eats lots. Jimmy of Jimmy Dean's vegetables. the pig. Yes. Yes. Okay. He does eat a, a little bit of a pig diet. He eats a third of a cup of pig food, which is basically just oats. Um, and then he gets fresh salad every day, and then he gets a mix. It depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes I do Sojo's vegetable mix. Sometimes I do Honest Kitchen. Sometimes I do Grandma Lucy's. Whatever we have a lot of in the store is what I bring home for Jimmy Dean. But basically, Sojo's is my favorite for him because it's chunky vegetables. Um, Tala, my Mastiff, she was on a large breed puppy food. She was growing way too fast. So we found out she had HOD, so it's inflammation in her joints. She, okay. I noticed her limping a little bit. It wasn't that big of a deal, but it concerned me enough to where I took her to the vet. I had him do x-rays to see what was going on. It's very common in large breed dogs. Um, because the kibble was making her gain so much weight, and I put her on the best large breed kibble we had, it still freaked me out, though, that she was gaining so much. I took her off, and I switched her to raw. Um, I made sure the calcium and phosphorus was exactly 0.2 apart. That was the most important thing for me. We started her on acupuncture. We started her on massage therapy and chiropractic. All the swelling's gone. She's slowed her growth down to about three to four pounds a month now, where she was gaining four to five pounds a week before. So now she's four to five pounds a week. Yeah, she was gaining weight so fast. Ooh. She's but she's big. Her father's huge. Her mother's she's huge. She's a big girl. Yeah, her dad was like one fifty, maybe more. I'm not sure. Mom oh. was about one twenty. But she was already she's now eighty two pounds and she's almost eight, um, eight months old. So she she looks phenomenal though. Good. But if you saw her last month, she was seventy six pounds. She was just I mean, she was growing way too fast. Um, stir fry is my difficult case. We've tried every food with him. He just has a very sensitive stomach. He's part shepherd, and I found that shepherds just have sensitive stomachs. Yep. That's just a thing with them. So he eats virus, and then I give him different wet toppers every day. He gets goat's milk every day. My dogs all get a variety of supplements. I make a lot of them myself. Um, sushi, my beagle, has pancreatitis, so she eats mainly wet food, and I rotate cans with her. She stays under 5% fat. And then pork wonton, my bulldog, was the worst. Six months, we went through diarrhea, diarrhea, diarrhea. We tried everything. We were at the vet nonstop trying to figure out what was going on. We are going to specialists in Richmond trying to figure out what was going on. Finally, I said, you know what? I'm going to put him on the most hypoallergenic food we have. I switched him over to canned kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Two days, diarrhea was completely gone. Oh. I did a food allergy trial on him um, that couldn't figure out what was going on still. And then when I did the rope test, we did a Dr. Dodd's rope test. Had that sent off, came back. He is highly allergic to egg. Like it was off the charts. And everything I was feeding him had egg in it. So now he eats mainly kangaroo. He eats kangaroo, pork, and goat are the three that are safe for him. So, yeah. So those are the diets that my Good night. Get. How long does yeah. it take you to prepare that? All of them. It's usually 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to yeah. 30 minutes. So I do morning feedings. My husband does night feedings. And then Tala eats, our puppy eats three times a day. So we alternate her. But it's lunch. a commitment. I mean, you get yeah. you get animals and you owe it to them to feed them. They're my kids. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have human children. I have four-legged kids. So I treat them like I would a human child. Yeah. Well, good for you. So, guys, I, I see I'm logged into the Facebook here for those watching live. I see your questions coming in. Keep them coming. I will get to them. We have a lot of questions that were emailed to us, so I'm going to get to those first. Um, 
But if you have questions that you want to know, um, and I don't know if you're willing to give specific opinions on specific brands or not. Um, I'd ra- I don't want to bad mouth anybody. Okay, so, okay. But I don't normally have anything bad to say about any brand. Okay. There's. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Um, all right. Well, let's get into the questions then. Uh, number one, uh, what is, okay, th- this is as general as it gets. What is the best food to feed my dog? I mean, I would imagine that that's going to be a per dog. It 100% depends on the dog that you're, you put in front of me. So if you come to me and you say, you know, I have your standard every day, you know, just normal mixed dog, you know, can eat anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I would probably, I would ask you a lot of questions about your dog, first of all, but my, my first response, if somebody came in and said, I want something that I can feed, but I can switch up proteins, it's always good to switch proteins to never feed the same thing day in and day out. Um, I would recommend from actually, for your just run-of-the-mill dog. They have a lot of different flavors that you can feed. You can rotate between pork, chicken, beef, so that's one of the kibbles I would recommend. Um, raw is my favorite of everything that we carry. I always encourage people to do raw, but it's a touchy subject for a lot of people. Um, so if, but if you came to me and you specifically said, what is the very best diet that you carry? I'm going to bring you right to my freezers and I'm going to show you the raw food that we have in our store. Yeah. So, but I mean, it, it's a case by case basis. It depends on the dog. If you come to me and your dog has kidney disease, I'm not going to go to raw. I'm going to go to something that has a lower protein or more highly digestible protein. Um, if your dog has liver disease, then we're going to go to one of our be- vegetable based foods and we're going to recommend tofu instead. I mean, there's it, every dog is different. So now let's, let's, let's touch on the raw stuff for a minute. Um, cause that's a big question that mm-hmm. a lot of people ask and we get that as trainers. Should I be feeding my dog, you know, hundred percent raw? And I'm like, I don't know. If so you can afford it and you know how to do it's it properly, expensive, right? it's very expensive. I'm spending about $15 a day to feed Tala raw. So when you say raw, is it different than when I say raw? Meaning when I think feeding a dog raw, it's going to uh, Wegmans to go get, you know, chicken, raw chicken, putting it in a bowl. And you can do that, but come to me and get the supplements. So that way we can make sure it's a complete diet for your dog. Because raw chicken is not a complete diet. And that's the important part, that's right? The important there's part. nutrients. Yes, and, absolutely. And you need organ meat. There's there's different things you need. You need all the vitamins included. And that's a must. Yes, like, absolutely. If they don't have that, then something's something bad is going to yes. happen. Your so dog it, can survive, but your dog's not going to be thriving. It's not a complete diet for them. Okay, so if you're if you're gonna do completely raw, you have to have the supplements yes. to go along with it. Is yes. it food supplements? You can you can do it yourself. You can, but it's I mean you have to have recipes for it. You can't just throw raw meat into a bowl and say okay that's it. Okay, what about uh, vitamins? You can do vitamins. You can add there are vitamins that you can buy. You can buy daily vitamins that you can add to it, but it's still not going to be a complete diet. So you still want to add those extra fats in there. I mean there's there's other things you want to add other than just meat. So all right. Let's just use my dog for an example. Uh, we'll use uh, we'll use Diesel. Okay, okay? Uh, Diesel is a eighty pound uh, Malinois. Um, if I wanted to switch him over to, to completely raw, and you've met mm-hmm. Diesel, yeah. very healthy, very energetic, very active. Um, if I wanted to switch him over to complete raw. Give me my steps. What do we're I need to do? We're going to go really slow. We've actually talked about this before. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to go really slow. I never switch a dog over to, to uh, switch a dog from kibble to raw immediately because you're going to have awful diarrhea. You're going to have digestion issues. We're going to go very, very slow. So just like when I tell people to switch from kibble to a different kibble, you're going to start with three quarters of what you're feeding now and you're going to add a fourth of the new food in. Okay. And you're going to do that for three to four days. After three to four days, you're going to do half and half three to four days. Then you're going to do three quarters of the new food, which would be raw, mm-hmm. and then a fourth of the old food to three to four days. Ten day period. I, I always tell people do it in ten days. And that way you're not putting a stri- any strain or stress on the dog's digestive system. Now let's switching. say that I'm supplementing the nutrients with vitamins. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, when would that start? Would that start at some point in those 10 days yes. or when I'm on complete raw? Well, if you were going to do raw, I would always tell people to start with me first. Come and get the raw from me okay. because you know it's it's complete and balanced. Yes, it's commercial. It's it's already prepared. There are patties that you can get. You can get nuggets. You can get patties. You can get chubs. I do patties just because it's more cost effective for me. Um, but it is a complete diet already in there. Everything's already mixed in. You literally, I, it's in my fridge right now. Every morning I go out and I take it out. It defrost. I put it in her bowl. She's good to go. Awesome. Okay. Um, so for those that are listening around the world um, who can't just pop into Dog Crazy in Fredericksburg or, or Stafford or Richmond, 
could they email you? Do you have somebody that they recommend? Yeah, uh, people email me all the time. I have no problem. All I want is for dogs to be healthy. I have no problem answering emails. I can't say I can do it within an hour, but within yeah, sure. 24 hours, I normally answer emails. I help people in South Carolina, Texas. Um, I mean, yet I'm actually helping somebody right now. Um, she's an editor for a magazine. I've been helping her with her dog. I um, mean, he's doing really great. So, I mean, my parents live in Leesburg. I, there's a store that I send them to in Leesburg to get their food when I can't get to them. Um, but I'm the one who comes up with what I want my mom to get for her dog. She has kidney issues. So she, we actually just got the report from her vet that all of her values have gone way down. So oh, wow. she's doing really great on her awesome. right now. Yeah. Awesome. And what, what is your email address so everyone knows? Uh, it is shopdogcrazy, S-H-O-P-D-O-G-K-R-A-Z-Y at gmail.com. And Sean um, will throw that in the comments uh, mm-hmm. down below. And find a store like mine. Find st- small independent stores. This is what they do. We all research food all day. We're all in groups together. We all talk. If they have, you know, if they need advice, I have store owners that come to me for advice all the time because they know that I went to school for this. You know, just, you know, go to that store. Give them the chance to help you. And how, how popular is it to be a, a certified pet nutritionist? I mean, are there a lot out there? Not or that I know. No, so not there's not. So. And that was kind of what I, where I was going was, could they go into a local pet store and say, are you a certified pet nutritionist? If so, most of them call themselves pet nutritionist <laughs> because they, they do. They read a lot. They learn a lot. They go to classes yeah, and whatnot, sure, sure. but I spent the money and did the courses. So I have three friends who who's paid the money and did part of the courses and didn't get the certification. They didn't finish because it is long. It takes a long time. I mean, a lot we of had stuff to go over. Like 50 bucks and... Some of the books I wanted to stab myself in the eye. You know, I had to learn about blood work and, and you know, it's, you know, anatomy, things that, you know, I hated school. <laughs> so right, right. It was tough for me, but, you know, the dogs were my main thing. So it's very yeah. cool. All right. So uh, next question we have is how can how can people tell if their dogs are overweight? And I, I know, I, I guess that's a nutrition question, maybe ask, more of a vet Tiffany. question. Ask Tiffany, who yeah. works here. She called my dog fat. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. She called Stir Fry fat. Oh, He's not no. fat anymore. Oh, <laughs> my God. Um, but seriously, do they should they just go by what their you vet says? Look, and... They need a waistline. We have people who come in, and their dogs are little round propane tanks. And they're like, oh, no, they're we're, And I'm like, no, pugs are not supposed to be like little round meatballs. They are supposed to have a waist. Bulldogs are supposed to have a waist. You should be able to feel their ribs as you run your fingers over the side of them. It's good to be able to see that last rib, too. Some people say one to two ribs you should be able to see. Okay. And no, um, no, uh, no human food. No, you do feed. You can feed human food. Yeah? Just be careful with fat. No French fries. No French fries. Uh, I went to the hospital with my beagle. $6,000 for a French fry. Yeah. Yeah. She I has get, awful pancreatitis. Stir, no Stir fry doesn't get any fries. I gave Diesel a, f- a few French fries when I first got them, and that was like the worst three I days remember. of my <laughs> life. Like, it was like literally like two fries, and I paid for that mm-hmm. uh, for like three days. Yeah. It was awful. I mean, it was just explosion. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I highly uh, do not recommend giving your dog uh, French fries uh, for whatever's in there. It's not Stay good. Stay away from the fats and the sugars. If you're doing fresh vegetables, you know, if you're doing meats that aren't cooked in a lot of fat, that's perfectly fine to give your dogs. What about a 100% vegan diet? That's popular now, no, Nancy. No, absolutely not. Dogs uh-huh. are carnivores. Absolutely not. No? No, dogs are carnivores. But being vegan is so popular now. It is, and being <laughs> vegan is amazing. I admire I wish I could be. I wish I could be vegan. I'm highly anemic. I need to have iron in some form, and meat is the way. When, when I wasn't eating a lot of meat, my H&H level was ridiculous. As soon as I put meat back into my diet, my anemia went under control. If I could be vegan, I would. Um, but no, for dogs, their teeth are meant to shred and grind bone. They are meant to eat meat. They can survive on a vegan diet, but they're not thriving on a, on a vegan diet. So I understand compassionate eating 100%, but don't do that to your dog. They wouldn't choose that. Don't choose it for them. There you have it. Stop, uh, stop giving your dog only vegetables. Yeah. If they have liver issues or kidney issues, then we can talk. Then I may go into the vegan, but I would actually recommend cooking, not feeding kibble that says V-Dog out of a bag. I would, you know, I, I wouldn't do that. Okay. Well, appreciate that. All right. Next question. Uh, puppies. Do puppies need special food? Yes. They need more fat and more calories. More fat yes. and more calories yes. for obvious reasons, Absolutely. right? And most dog brands carry puppy versions of... Yes. Uh, of what, you know, what they would feed them as an adult. Uh, does Akana? 
Uh, they have a large breed puppy and they have a puppy. They have Akana does, but they have it in in Canada. They don't make it here. But Origin, which is the same as it's Akana and Origin are made of the same company. They have a large breed and they have a puppy food. Okay. Um, now, what I will say about the Akana is it is expensive. Um, it's not cheap. Uh, no matter where you buy it from, uh, is it kind of like human food? You get what you pay yes, for. Absolutely. Yeah. I've eaten the food. As it actually came out of the machines when we were at the kitchen, I actually took it off and ate it. We ate their mackerel food. And it literally is soft and pliable when it first comes out, and we watched everything that went into it. I mean, it, it is human-grade food. And you know, obviously, I buy my dog food through uh, through Nancy. I do the auto ship, which people can do that, right? Yeah, you can no matter online, where, and no, I'll bring it to you. Or what if – can you ship it to them if – we actually are working on that right now. Okay. We we just got better rates um, with the shipping company. So awesome. We're, yeah, we've actually, like this morning, we woke up to three online orders, which was fantastic. Because so we that's were able coming. to reduce our shipping. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely. Nancy and Dog Crazy will be able to ship to you no matter where you're at yes. and do the order. So anyhow, you know how much dog food I go mm-hmm. through uh, a shit time. Yeah. And um, for the average person, I feel like one doesn't have five dogs. Right. And two, isn't feeding them the the highest of quality of stuff, maybe because they can't afford it or whatever the reasons are. What's a good middle ground, you know, that's not killing your budget, that's still good for your dogs? Earthborn. What's that called? Earthborn. Yeah. Earthborn is a great food. I've yeah. never heard of that. Earthborn. It's fantastic. It's a holistic company. They actually just came out with a new line venture that I absolutely love. I've been recommending it a lot for bulldogs. It's grain free. It's potato free. It's small kibble. So that what I love about it is when you put it in the bowl, I always tell people to add water to their food just okay. because it helps them to digest better. So as soon as you put water on it, it starts breaking down. So I don't do that you either. You should start adding water. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, goat's milk is another great thing that you can add that adds moisture to the food. You're big on goat's milk. I'm big on goat. I wish I could get some goats. What I are the benefits? What are the benefits of goat's milk? It's a probiotic for, for the dog. So it's it's like they they call it mother's milk for for animals. So um, like when the SPCA has puppies that come in and the mother's not producing milk, they'll actually ask me to start doing collections of goat's milk for them because that's what they're going to feed those puppies. So it's basically a complete diet that's very it's, it's easier on the digestive system. So just example, sushi. My beagle has pancreatitis. Like I'm not kidding. Last time she had a French fry, we were at the vet six thousand dollars. We were trying everything. My vet and I were working out diets for her, and we were trying everything for her. We could not get her stomach to these awful noises that it would make every time she ate. Started adding goat's milk to her food. Knock on wood, wherever it is. We have not been back to the vet for it since. So she gets goat's milk twice a day. It's completely changed her life. And I've been able to mix up her foods. I can give her different proteins every day now. I still stay really low-fat with her. Um, But, like, this morning she had beef. Tonight she's going to have duck for dinner. So she's able just adding goat's milk. It's the only change I've made. That was drywall, by the way. That wasn't wood. I need one. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on everything. <laughs> and actually, when, when I gave uh, D- Diesel <laughs> some French fries and um, uh, he was, whatever, sick for three days, yeah. I came and I saw you and I said, what can I give this dog to where I can stop cleaning the shit <laughs> all over the place? And you recommended goat's milk. Yeah. And that that actually cured it almost instantly. Yeah. It really did. So uh, definitely, I didn't know anything about it. And that's good for all animals. Oh, yeah? absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, uh, Panther, my cat, w- also went on goat's milk after his surgery. He yeah. had to have a, a, a transgender oh, change yeah. surgery. Oh, yeah. He's Yeah, so. I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, so we're not totally sure what to call him now. Um, anyhow. Uh, we gave him goat's milk as well when he got out of surgery, and that seemed to help with the recovery a little bit. It's and easy on the stomach. Yeah, yeah. So goat's milk, check that out, guys. Uh, I don't recommend tasting it, though. No? No, it tastes like hair. It's like butt hair. It's not But the okay. dogs love it. Dogs love it. Yeah, one of the companies <laughs> told me. Did she say it tastes like butt it hair? It literally <laughs> tastes like burnt butt hair. We're gonna, it is, we're gonna leave. Yeah, we're going to leave that right good. there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so people... The go-to used to be pumpkin. And yeah, pumpkin is fantastic. Pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We actually have a product that actually has my bulldog on it. It's a pumpkin latte. So when Piglet had open heart surgery, I couldn't get her to eat. Um, and I needed to get nutrients into her. So I started taking goat's milk, and I did pumpkin, and I added cinnamon. I warmed it up a little bit, made it kind of frothy, and I put it in a bowl for her and gave her that. And she was able to eat, and she was able to have bowel movements again. I was at a show one day, and I was telling these, um, these two ladies I love that dig in your dog. They make the best products. I was telling them about it. And they actually made it into a product, and they put Piglet's face on it and dedicated it to her. So it's a nice. pumpkin latte, and it has Piglet on the back. It says dedicated. To nice. Her. Yeah, I love I love the pumpkin when yeah. the stomachs. I feel like it helps with diarrhea, constipation, yeah, like all absolutely. of the above. Any stomach issues you're having, it's like put a tablespoon of pumpkin in their yeah. next 
in their next feeding and call it a day, you know? Yeah. So I'm in, in regular pan or canned pumpkin out of the grocery store is fine. Just make sure it's a hundred percent pumpkin. hundred percent pumpkin. Not the pumpkin pie filling that's filled with sugar and yeah, other yeah. things your dogs don't need. Yeah. I don't think we do that. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Uh, how about senior dogs? Special food? Uh, senior dogs, I just try to do a high, more highly digestible diet for them. We lower their calorie intake. A lot of the companies will actually lower the protein. I don't feel so much you have to unless there's an issue going on. But if you're feeding a highly digestible diet, whole foods, you know, I, I cook for my seniors. So I actually just lost six dogs in a row when they were all, you know, all 10 plus, And I cooked for every single one of them until the, the, until the day they died. Okay. Very cool. All right. So this is a question that we got, uh, we, we had emailed in. And I actually am curious about this to see if I'm doing it right, because I'm actually going through uh, an issue right now, which I'll get into. Uh, how much food needs to be cut from the pet's diet for weight loss? And let me explain my situation. So you know little Kylo, my little mm-hmm. Frenchie. So Frenchie, or Frenchie, Kylo is actually my daughter's dog. Um, long story short, uh, it used to be Gio Gonzalez's dog of the Washington Nationals. It ended up with us. Uh, which means it ended up with Hannah. That is like her soulmate. And, um, but because it belongs to Kylo belongs to an 11 year old little girl. Um, he's, she is like treat after treat after yeah. treat. And, and sometimes I don't see Kylo for like a week because he stays in her room and she takes him out for the walks or whatever. So Kylo comes downstairs a few nights ago and I'm like, oh, he's overweight. Yeah. Like I could see it. I'm like, he's overweight. Um, so he's on a Kana mm-hmm. and he gets, uh, about a half of a cup AM and PM. Okay. How much do I need to cut? First, I would have her start giving him treats. His food is treats. Oh, I, I cut treats out. I cut, Are I told her. sure? Well, as sure as yeah. a father with an 11 year old. Try to tell me not to give my old. dog treats and I'm still going to give him treats. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Okay. So continue. Sorry. Yeah. So I, first of all, I would explain to her, look, this is, I would ration his food for the day and have it to the side and say, look, if you're going to give him treats, we're going to give him treats out of here. If you want to make them a little bit more special, you know, you can do something like, um, I take like freeze dried liver. If you actually take that and you blend it up, you make it into a powder, you can actually sprinkle it on top of the kibble, shake it up and it gives the kibble a different taste. They're still getting their food, but there's that extra tiny bit of calories from the freeze dried um, liver that's in there. So it makes it different for them. Um, So I first, that's my first thing is treats are always what I ask first. And what else are you feeding besides the food? Um, um, if they're not doing that and they definitely are just doing the food, I tell them to cut it by about a fourth. Just cut it a small amount. You can add a wet food in there. You can add a little bit of vegetable in there just so they're getting a little bit more. Adding the water in there helps to fill it up. Um, so like stir fry when I bought him here for training, Tiffany told me he was mm-hmm. fat. I didn't think he was. He's gorgeous. But I, you know, I looked at him a little bit longer and I'm like, all right, his waist has expanded a tiny bit and I couldn't feel <laughs> he, his He cannot fit in those same skinny jeans exactly. that he once could. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He was definitely stir fry fat guy. Um, so I actually cut his food by a fourth of a cup in the morning and then a fourth of a cup at night. So I cut him by half a cup a day. Okay. It took the weight off. And, and a matter of fact, it took the weight off to where he got a little too thin. So I increased his food. I upped it an eighth of a cup morning and night, but I also do the wet toppers with him. And how quickly should we be seeing the results to know if we need to cut more or whatever? I get tell people give it a couple of weeks. You'll start to notice it. We have scales at all of our stores, so you can bring them in and weigh them if you don't want to go by your vet. PetSmart, I think, has scales also. Mm-hmm. Most of the stores around we have do. one in here as well. Yeah, now. yeah, and you can you know check it that way, just see how they're doing. But it's not something that's going to be instant. The only time we've done it really quickly is when we adopted our bull mastiff, and she was 120 pounds, and we when she did an ACL surgery, we got the weight off her fast. Yeah, um, and we did that. We actually added vegetables to her food we cut her food big time but she was way overweight and we needed to get that weight off as soon as possible because she was in so much pain from her knee okay so quarter cup cut it by a quarter Mm -hmm. cup um first get rid of the treats get rid of the treats Yeah. then cut it by a quarter cup uh if you need to uh, lose more and then find that maintenance level exactly that balances between what they're eating and how much they're being exercised right i mean that has a lot to do with it as well you can also feed them out of a treat ball and that way they're exercising while they're eating so that's another thing I recommend to people. We have a variety of different treat balls in all of our stores. And if they eat kibble, you can put their food in that in the ball, and uh-huh. they have to push the ball around to actually eat. That's actually how I feed my pig a lot of the time, is to get exercise on that's him. That's not a bad idea, because Kylo, I mean, he's got a crazy ball drive. So, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, he's a Frenchie. Yeah, so we'll definitely look into that. He just needs to lose a couple of pounds. Yeah. He's not crazy overweight, but um, I like him to show a little bit he of muscle. He doesn't look like a tick. Yeah. Uh, the little it, ones look like ticks about to explode when they're doing <laughs> Kylo's about 
he's 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 about 28 <laughs> pounds right now oh he should be like 24 right yeah he, yeah 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 between 24 and 25 yeah she has to stop giving him treats yeah so we'll we'll get it off uh and i mean that just goes to show you guys you know i'm a trainer and we even struggle with weight issues with our personal dog so yeah. you know it's nothing to be embarrassed about it's just figuring out what to do about it and that's why we have miss nancy here all right, so next question. Just because a dog food is more expensive, does that necessarily mean that it's more nutritious? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Hmm. A lot of these companies pay so much money for marketing, for packaging, and then you read the ingredients on the food. And there's a bunch that have come into my store, and they're like, oh, you know, you need to carry this food. And I look at it, and I'm like, this is like 52% carbohydrate. Why is it so expensive? Why is it the same price as Origin and Nicana? And they're like, oh, we put a lot of money into this and this and this. And I'm like, no, no, no. All your money should go into the food, not into putting that food out there. Because if you have a good product, you can sell it just because of what's in it. You don't have to pay all that money for TV commercials, radio ads, things like that. If you have a good product, it's going to sell itself by what's in it. So all the money should go into the food, not into the packaging. So there's a few brands out there that I've seen that I'm like, there's no way it should be that expensive. It's, it's you know, I'm not going to name names, but there's a lot of them out there that just I don't understand why. Okay. So whoever submitted that question, there's your answer. Uh, next one we have here is, this is a good one, what are the best sources of quality protein? Um, real, real meat is going to be your best. It's again, if you see meat on a bag or you see animal on a bag, if you see that on a can, if you see that on uh, freeze-dried food, uh, raw, you don't know what the source is. You want to see actual names you understand. You want to see chicken. You want to see turkey. You want to see rabbit. You want to see duck. You want to see venison. You want to know that's the meat that's actually in there. Um, when I cooked for my dogs, I went to the butcher, I went to my organic grocer, and I bought all organic meat for them. That's definitely going to be the best. You know, I learned a lot about all of this for myself even. Like, I used to eat just regular meat. Now I eat organic because um, one of the things I read was, like, if you take a chicken and you boil the entire chicken, all that brown foam that comes to the top of the pot when you're boiling that chicken is all the toxins leaving its body. I've not eaten anything but organic since then. Mm. So, if you, and I mean, try it yourself. Boil a regular chicken, boil an organic chicken, and see what comes out of it. You, it's a huge difference. Well, you just ruined my day. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. Right. It's well, not that expensive to eat organic. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm unfortunately probably going to be YouTubing that tonight. I, <laughs> oh, I'm screwed. I'll make a video. <laughs> there you go. Right? There you go. Nancy's <laughs> going to make a video on that. We'll hold you to that. All right. Uh, next question is, what is... A good example of a balanced diet for a dog. Well, if you go into any store and you look at a bag of food, it's going to say if it's a complete and balanced diet. There are a lot of foods out there now that are just meant for supplemental feeding. Um, there's a lot of different ones. There's a few cat formulas I've seen that are not complete diets, and they have to put that because a lot of them don't have the taurine that a cat needs. They're not going to have the vitamins that a dog or cat needs. So most of the diets that are on the market through AFCO have to be complete and balanced. And if it's not complete and balanced, it will say it on there. So it'll actually say this? It will actually say intermittent or intermittent or supplemental feeding. Is that a law that? I be, Yeah. For, for AFCO, they have to put that on the bag. Because it's, if it's not a complete diet, you're not giving your animal all the nutrients it needs. It, you know, it can come back at them. Okay. So, yeah, they, they actually follow that stuff pretty strict. There's been a lot of things that, like, we were out of a couple of cans for quite a while, and it was because the what they had written on the label yeah. was not okay through AFCO. They had put, I think it was the green lip muscle, that they weren't allowed to have green lip muscle on there because they were saying that was a vitamin source, and they had to change it to just say muscle instead. It's They pay attention to that stuff. All righty. Grains. Yes or no? Good Depends. or bad? Depends on the dog. Depends on the dog, right? Depends on the dog, yeah. So I, I, I kind of, I feel like almost everything depends on it, that specific dog, 100%. right? 100%. I mean, there's there's common ground of this is what you don't feed your dog, yeah. um, which is number one, French fries from McDonald's. Don't feed your dog that. Uh, you know, sugars, high sugars, yeah, don't feed high fats. Food. Don't do that. Uh, how do you feel about treats? See, and that's just, that's the thing is, well, when it comes to grains, so if you come to me and you say, my dog has explosive diarrhea, what do I do? I'm going to tell you to do chicken and rice. So I can't tell you to not do grains because I'm going to tell you when your dog isn't feeling well, that's what you should give them. Um, but some dogs are just different. Like I said, stir fry can't do all meat. He has to have some grains in his diet. That's the only way we were able to get perfect bowel movements with him. He has oats in his diet. Um, so it, it, with everything, it always depends on the dog. 
So when you see, I'm not going to name names, you see those foods out there that say, this is made for poodles, this is made for bulldogs, this yes. is made for, that is the dumbest I, I used thing to do ever. That. I used no. to do that. That's like saying I'm a brunette and I should eat what every brunette eats. Royal, I'll no. call them out. Royal, Royal what is it? Royal Canine, Royal Cannon. I didn't say it. I'm, I don't, I I don't care. They don't, they don't, they're not paying me. So, yeah, they have breed specific food. And yeah. and before I met you and we switched to Akana, that's what we fed. If you read the Bulldog one, it drives me crazy. There's so many grains in the Bulldog one. And I'm sorry, Bulldogs do not do well on grains. They do not do well on potatoes. They're prone to yeast. And that's what's in the food. Their poodle food is the same as the Bulldog one. You know how much and, money I've wasted on that food? Like, because that's expensive shit yeah, too. Yeah, man, they, and it's all fillers. I think there's millet in it. Millet's bird food. Bastards. You know, it's <laughs> they got me. They got me. All right, so breed specific food is not a thing. I don't agree with it at all. It'd be like saying that all redheads should eat one thing, all blondes should eat one thing, all brun. It's it's it, every dog's different. Yeah, I've had two bulldogs, which and makes of, sense. Yeah, both yeah. of my bulldogs are can eat eight completely different diets. You know, it's every dog is I just, different. I just got sold. I got sold, Sean. It's marketing. They're, they have genius marketing. Yeah, they got me. Yeah. So, Chris Harris, I'm getting to Facebook questions now, guys. So, if you have them, go ahead and put them in there. Uh, Chris Harris is a good friend of mine. And this is a really good question because I feel like a lot of people probably struggle with this. Uh, <laughs> his dog has bad gas no matter what he feeds him. Okay. He's, he's not digesting properly is normally the case. So I would try feeding him smaller, more frequent meals and try something that's a little bit more digestible. So are, are you feeding just kibble? Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine. I would imagine. Yeah, if you're feeding just kibble, then he's probably having trouble digesting that. So I would actually start, um, God, email me so I can go into detail with this. But I would actually find out what kibble you're feeding. I would first start with saying, let's feed more frequent meals. Let's add water so we can get more digestion in there. And then if you're feeding something like uh, lamb, venison, I would actually take you off that protein and I would put you on something like duck, uh, white fish, something that's a little bit more digestible. Um, duck and white fish, rabbit, those meats are actually cooling meats. They actually reduce inflammation so that can actually cause the gas to get a little bit better. Um, and I would, again, I would get off of kibble and go to wet if you can, if you go to something that's a little bit easier for the dog to digest. What about goat's milk? Would that fix? Goat's milk can help. His can dog help. farting? Yeah, it can help, but it, it can cause more farting too, I feel depending like, on the dog. <laughs> I feel like farting's a healthy thing though, no? Oh man, Porky man, my bulldog, he gets up on my thigh, he farts and makes it jiggle. It's, yeah. It's so, so if it doesn't bother you, if your dog farting doesn't bother you, just they're fine yeah i mean you know open your windows yeah you know get some air in the house <laughs> freshen it yeah, up a come little on bit. guys St you know come on chris stop make hating some on your dog videos man. put them online make your dog famous <laughs> have you guys seen my pig farting one? Oh no oh i have one of my pig farting in the backyard it's funny uh, his well, whole body like goes into it when he farts we'll have to yeah, put that one up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, another question from joseph mankowski uh what does it mean when it says crude proteins Crude protein is the well. There's. I need to know exactly what food you're talking about. All right. So, uh, Joseph, go ahead and put down exactly what food. We'll come back to that one. Um, what about? Uh, here's another question. If you could touch on low protein brands where they're not heavy in the, you know, the protein section of yeah. their, the ingredients. Yeah, I mean, every, like I said, every dog is different. Like for a large breed dog, I don't recommend anything over 27% protein. Um, if it's too high in protein, they can grow too quickly. So it, just, it depends on the dog. Some dogs do well on lower proteins where some dogs do better on high protein. So if you have a high energy dog like a Border Collie, um, that's where I'm going to recommend, you know, a cattle dog. Even Well, shepherds are hard for me. Shepherds, I kind of go both ways because like I said, most of the shepherds that come in, yeah, your face. Yeah. I, you and I talked about this. Yeah. Yeah, shepherds can have very That's sensitive right. stomachs. Like, it shocks me that yours do well on a canna. It really does. Because yeah. I don't have, I I think you're my only yeah. shepherd guy that does a canna. Yeah. Well, again, I had to switch the flavors uh, to lamb. Yeah. And so that shocks me, too, because lamb is a hot meat. So lamb actually causes inflammation. So it, that's why it's it's weird that your dogs do so well on it. it that's why when I saw when it, when you did your when I did your one where you got the free bag because when you buy twelve bags from me, you get the thirteenth bag free. Um, I went in and that's where I saw that you bought duck before because it pulled duck as your free bag and I was like, why did he switch? Because you know for yours I would actually go to duck more than I would hmm. to lamb. Yeah, no, they love that shit. Yeah, yeah they they very rarely have problems. Um, Kylo does fart a lot. 
Yeah. Uh, I think it's funny. That's a bulldog thing. Yeah, I think it's funny. Yeah. It doesn't really bother me. I, again, he sleeps in Hannah's room, so that's her problem, not mine. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's a good question. Um, it seems a little odd to me, but let's ask it. Uh, giant schnauzer, sensitive, sensitive stomach, mm-hmm. wants to give him treats, but has only found one that she can give him. She does not feed raw because he becomes aggressive. So... Food aggressive? <clears throat> yeah, that, that's what I'm guessing, is that he becomes food aggressive, which that doesn't surprise me. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, dogs can become food aggressive over food, if, especially if it's yeah, food but I mean, really like. But more so because it's raw? Yeah, because it's delicious. I mean, dogs want raw. I mean, it's raw meat. It's... You know, I think that's a training question, not a nutrition question. So I would suggest <laughs> finding a reputable trainer in your area. And that, uh, that's not me being a dick. That's like just being a, a dog trainer. Um, if your dog is not able to eat what's best for him just simply because uh, he is reactive when you get near his bowl or whatever, I would suggest uh, seeing a trainer and getting that taken care of because... Uh, why make your dog suffer, uh, and not necessarily suffer, but not give them the full benefit of uh, the raw diet if if it can be simply fixed with a few lessons. So uh, that would be my recommendation uh, to you as well. well. I can tell you, Sushi, my, my beagle, the only time she growls with her food is when we feed her duck. It's her favorite. She If we put duck in that bowl, that's when I know I have to feed them it because I feed them all together. My pig is the only one that eats on our deck because he makes a mess when he eats. Um, but I know that I need to feed sushi faster than I feed the other dogs. So that way she can finish her food first because she's my slowest eater. So if there's duck in her bowl, I know Tala's going to finish her food quickly and then go to sushi. And I, I call it sharking her and start so- sharking her. And that's when a food fight breaks out in my house. So I just am more careful when I feed something that I know is a high value food. To them. Gotcha. And Jerry asked a question about her. Uh, I actually trained her dog Clover. Um, she asked a question that her dog needs to lose about five pounds. If you play this back once it's over, Jerry, you can uh, see that Nancy said to just simply cut the food by a quarter yeah. of what you're feeding her yeah, now. Just, exactly. And, and monitor watch, and watch their waistline. Make sure that they're not losing weight too fast. Um, it's easier to, it, I try to tell people that it's actually a little bit better when they're figuring out what to feed, to feed a little bit less because it's a lot easier to get the weight, to get, to put weight on them than it is to get the weight off of them. Okay. Um, and then this is a question, I'm assuming this is going to be a per dog, uh, type question. She says, Priscilla Gentry says, what's the best type of diet, uh, to feed, American bullies. Do you have a generalized? I, I do actually. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, I do. So with bulldogs, um, I mean, bull, bulldogs are my specialty. That's that's my favorite breed. It's my breed of choice. Most of the bulldogs, and I'm not saying all, but most of them do have a lot of issues with yeast. So when bulldogs come in, um, when you come into my store, we actually have training manuals for all my employees behind the desk. So if they come in and they have a certain breed of dog, we pretty much know what that dog is going to have issues with. So we always go to, if you want to feed kibble, um, there's two that I actually really love for bulldogs. Signature is one of them, and then Venture by Earthborn is another. They're both grain and potato free. Um, they're fantastic. They have a lot of different meats you can choose from. You can rotate between the flavors, but they have a lot of cooling meats, which again, I recommend for bulldogs, duck, rabbit, whitefish. Um, turkey is a neutral meat. So that's another one that I, I like my bulldog did really well on turkey. Uh, pork is another one that's a cooling meat. So for bulldogs, I always recommend going grain and potato free and then staying with a cooling meat rather than lamb, venison, bison, stay away from things that actually are, that, um, will raise their body temperature and cause more inflammation. Okay, very cool. Uh, Patricia, I want to kind of settle this. We, we didn't say Royal Canaan. Is it Canine, Canaan? I didn't say it. You there's, did. There's no, but how do you pronounce that brand? I have brand? no idea. I think it's, it's I, can, whatever. <laughs> okay, Royal, I didn't say it wasn't good. I'm just saying that apparently um, when companies. <laughs> it's marketing. When companies put specific breeds on the label saying that this is for that specific breed, it is purely a marketing uh, campaign. Exactly. It, it has to be, they cannot say just for this breed, all of them. No. This is what you feed. So, so. I, when I went to look yesterday to see the foods that were recalled to see if they were still on the shelves, so that brand was in one of the stores. And of course, I went over and I took pictures of it. And I sat down when I got home and I looked at the ingredients and the ingredients were practically the same in every single bag. And all of the first ingredients were, hold on, can I get my phone out? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so the first ingredients in almost all of them were, they were just grains. It was grains and grains and grains and grains. Um, hold on. And there was bird food in there, too. Wow. Remember that. And that, that's a big one for me. If, if I see millet on an ingredient panel, I won't bring the food into my store because I think it's ridiculous. Millet, you said? Millet. millet. Yeah, that's what millet. I give my macaw. Yes. My macaw eats millet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, corn, chicken byproduct meal, brewer's rice, wheat, corn gluten meal, chicken fat, natural flavors, pea fiber, dried beet pulp. So the first five ingredients in there is going to be like 70% of what's in the food. So it's corn, which is a cheap protein. If you see corn in a dog food, the food should not cost $50 a bag. It's corn. And I try to tell people when you see corn in a food, so I'll just be open here. So when you eat corn, what happens the next day when you poop? comes out the same way it goes in. Exactly. You see it in your poop. So that's what you're doing to your dog. You're feeding your dog corn, which is going to go right through their system. They don't digest it. We don't digest it. So it's just a cheap filler. It's a cheap filler that's in food. And, you know, you can argue with me all you want. But if you, you know, read those ingredients and you'll see it in there. Meat should be the first ingredient. Now, can can what type of food or the diet you're feeding, I would have to assume the answer is yes to this. Can that affect if a dog uh, gets uh, starts itching a lot? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dogs can have allergies to different meats. I mean, like Porky is allergic to eggs. He's allergic to chicken. He's allergic to whitefish. Um, his allergy testing came back with a bunch of different ones. So that's why we figured pork was safe, goat was safe, kangaroo was safe for him. So those are the three that I rotate with. So is it necessarily an allergy if they start itching based off of the it? Normally, yeah. It's so normally it is an allergy. Mm -hmm. Is How common are allergy, food allergies in dogs? Extremely. There's so much overbreeding right now. It's, it's, so is it shitty breeding? Is that, I mean, is that? I mean, anybody can be allergic. I'm allergic to things and I don't think I was bred shitty. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's certain dogs are just allergic to certain things. Like, yeah, just kind of like people then. Yeah. And like, like most of them, they'll go to the vet for it and the vet will say immediately take them off chicken. It's not always chicken you know chicken is one that a lot of dogs actually can have it's normally the grains that are in it or it's going to be something rare like we had a dog come in today is allergic to red meat gotcha so it really just depends on the dog all right so uh somebody here had a question and i lost it but i remember the question because i was curious about it um what about diets for working dogs um i recommend high protein for yeah so dogs. like diesel for example yeah who is very active uh so the belgian malinois yeah. typically that's a that's a very active high energy high protein right yeah absolutely absolutely and, and, and like i said i don't recommend it for all dogs but working dogs absolutely i recommend <clears throat> would you protein. would you ever recommend adding protein to what they're already eating meaning um because in the working dog uh side of the world there's a lot of uh, supplement like protein powders yeah. that you can put yeah. in the food uh is there something i should specifically be looking for on the label or just kind of go with a reputable company and it, and it depends on if they need it so one of the things i hear the most with working dogs is they need to get more fat into the dog's diet and okay. there's been a couple of powders that i've looked into which i didn't really like the ingredients that were in it there were some of them that i kind of questioned mm -hmm. so i would say adding more protein one of the things i always tell people egg egg is a fantastic thing to add it's 100 percent digestible the body uses all of it raw or cooked you can do either one you can do either one if you have a dog with sensitive stomach start with cooked but if you have a dog that's already eating raw then raw eggs are completely actually that's fine. how we got some weight on diesel yeah mm -hmm. yeah we we that's did we did eggs and he couldn't do what was it he couldn't do cooked eggs i tried scrambling eggs and i don't know i can't remember if he just didn't like it and wouldn't eat it or if it messed up his stomach or anyhow how did you cook it though did you use oils scram or no scram butter scrambled okay you know well butter yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Butter can do that. If you're going to cook an egg like that and you want to use a little bit of oil, do a teeny bit of coconut oil. Or get one of those copper of... pans. I love those. I just they should sponsor this show yeah. because I would talk so much good shit about your company if you sponsored this show. I yeah. love that. I just bought a second one yesterday. We have three now. If you it's don't like have a favorite. copper pan, holy crap, yeah. go get one. They're yeah. absolutely amazing. Absolutely. You don't need butter. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, but anyhow, so I switched to uh, just raw. I was just cracking the egg open in his food. And he did fine with well, it. he did fine once I stirred it up with his with his food. If if I just cracked it over top as like a topping, he looked at it and then looked at me and was like, "What the fuck are you doing? Get this out of my plate!" And so once I stirred it up and kind of make it blend in a little bit with his uh, with his kibble, he was good to go. He loved it, and and that was a very effective way I I, I realized to uh, put weight on a dog uh, 
uh, rather quickly, yeah, actually. Seven, it's, uh, I, want, I think it's 70 calories per egg if you get a large egg, I want to say. Okay. Um, next question we have here on Facebook uh, from Karen Lawson. She goes... Oh, Lord. She wants to it's know... one of my besties. What is the difference <laughs> in hot meat and cold meat? So hot meat and cold meat, it's, it's how the Chinese, that it's, it's something that they use. So hot meats are going to be meats that actually raise the body temperature, that actually can cause inflammation. So lamb, bison. So example, if you have a chihuahua and you come into my store with your chihuahua and your chihuahua shakes all the time or it's a dog that's always going to be by the fireplace because they're always cold, that's when I'm going to recommend hot meats like lamb, bison, venison. If you have a dog that is always hot and is panting constantly, is always looking for a cold floor to lay on, is always, you know, the dog that wants to be laying in the swimming pool outside filled with ice, that's when I'm going to say let's do a cooling meat like rabbit because it actually helps to reduce the body temperature. So how we explain it in my store is in the summertime when you're hot, you eat watermelon. It helps to cool you down. In the winter, you're cold. You eat soup. It helps to raise your body temperature. So it's kind of the same way with, with proteins and meats. And most people don't believe us until they actually see a difference. So, like, I have a friend whose dog was panting constantly. She switched him to a whitefish food, and the panting stopped. Hmm. So it actually helps to cool the body temperature. Really? And I always tell people it's a great thing in the wintertime to actually put them on hot and warm meats, and then in the summertime put them on cold meats so you can rotate throughout the year. Man. I would have never thought that. That's, yeah, that's, I'm reading a new book about it right now. There's not very many out there, but Dr. Judy Morgan just wrote a new book, and it's a uh, oh god, it's like the, the Zen. I can't remember the name of it. I'm on page like 130, but it's it's a really good food, and it's all about hot and cold meats. That's good info. I'll have to check you know check that out and read into it as well. Um, Christina on here says uh, the reason she keeps her dog on kibble is simply because it just makes her dog stool firm. Yeah. Um, is there a way to kind of balance out the raw diet and not the wet poops? Yeah, I mean, you can add it as a topper. I mean, just adding a little bit of fresh food or raw food to their meals is going to make a huge difference. So can I do that tonight if my dogs yeah. have never, um, and any specific, if, if I weren't going to go to a dog crazy and I just mm -hmm. hit up the grocery store on the way home, I just get a... Get some fresh chicken. Chicken thigh. Yeah. Just organic. get some fresh chicken. Yeah, do organic. Do chicken breast. Completely raw. Yeah, you can add raw. You add a little bit. Don't add a lot. Just a little bit. If you okay. cook it, you can add a little bit more. <laughs> so what if I put one chicken leg in their in their food tonight? Yeah, just watch their stool because they're probably going to have loose stool. Yep. But after time, it'll firm up. You know, they get used to it. As long as it's not uncontrollable. Exactly. To where exactly. they're not, you know, poopy duking all over the house. <laughs> That'll be amazing. So... Uh, I'll, I'll give that a shot because I've always thought as well, My headphones bad. falling off, uh, I've always thought as well that after, because I've done a lot of research as well, and, you know, uh, raw is the best way to go yeah. for dogs. but and a lot of people are squeamish about it. And the, the only time I don't recommend raw is, number one, if you can't afford it. Number two, if you have a small child that's going to be crawling into the bowl if you're not going to clean up after. Uh -huh. after. So, like, after Tala eats, I immediately take her bowl up, I wipe down the area where she ate, and I wash the bowl immediately. Smart. Um, or if you have a dog that has a autoimmune disease, is going through chemotherapy, I don't recommend raw. Their body can't fight off that bacteria. So okay. those are really the only times I don't recommend raw to people. Okay. So make sure you clean the bowls really, Absolutely. really good yeah. after every feeding. Yes. Because it, it hurts us. It's not going to hurt the dog, but, you know, the bacteria in raw can actually affect humans. Wipe your counters down. You know, mine is, I have certain containers that I only use for raw food that are in my house. I have a shelf in my fridge where I keep raw food, and I wipe that down every week, too. And the bones are healthy for them. Absolutely. But they have to be raw. They have to be raw. Yes. You can have smoked bones. There's this whole thing now saying that smoked, that... I don't. Even, I think it was seven dogs or something like that had cracked teeth, or there were some instances. Your dog can chew on anything and crack a tooth. They can go outside and bite into a rock and crack a tooth. You mm -hmm. have to watch your dogs whenever they're eating a natural chew. So the one thing that I do have loose in my house at all times is antlers. There's antlers in my house right now, and my dogs are in my living room right now, and I don't watch them with that. When I get home, if I notice anything's wrong, then you know. But I also have cameras in my house where I can watch them and make sure nothing's going on. Um, Any nutritional benefits to the antlers? Antlers are loaded with calcium. They're low fat. So it's a it's a safe chew for dogs with uh, pancreatitis, any dog that you want to lose weight. It's a long-lasting chew. Antlers last months in my house. Um, my pig even picks them up and carries them around and gnaws on them a little bit. So, um, What about dogs who have uh, other medical conditions? Uh, for example, Lex uh, is talking about her 15-year-old German Shepherd lab mix. Um, which congratulations that he's 15. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. That is absolutely amazing. 
Um, but anyhow, he has he does have hip dysplasia, mm-hmm. uh, which is common in older shepherds. Is there anything diet wise that they can give uh, their dogs to kind of uh, offset that and yeah. and help them make them you know feel better? I know CBD oil. Yeah, CBD oil is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So you're an advocate for oh, CBD oil big as time. well. I take it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah I do it. too. Actually, yep. now that since Desiree's been on this on on the show. Um, she made me a believer and yeah. I, I do it now as well. And I actually feel better yeah. daily. Helps uh, me sleep. It gets rid of my migraines. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. We're, we're actually going to, uh, my wife and I are going on a trip, I think in two weeks to Vegas and I'm, I'm terrified of flying on the planes <laughs> and I usually have to take, uh, either an anti-anxiety med before I get on the plane or just get wasty pants hammered, yeah. um, to where I don't really care if the plane crashes or not. <laughs> So I'm actually going, this will be the first flight I've ever taken, well, since I was a kid, to where I'm not going to do either. I'm not going to get shitty drunk, and I'm not going to take a med. I am going to take CBD oil pre-flight and see if that does the trick. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited and nervous all at the same time. And if you guys missed that episode, I believe it was, what, six, Sean? Mm-hmm. Um, with Cody Talon and Desiree Joyce, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, CBD oil benefits for your dog and for humans. So yeah. totally suggest you going back and listening to that one. Um, they made Believer out of me. Uh, my dog made a Believer out of me. Um, so anyhow, go back. And Did they talk about it for dogs, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I started it with Piglet. I mean, she, wait, actually, Nova is when I really started it. My bull mastiff when she had cancer. That was the only one I could get her to eat. So yeah, I gave her some CBD oil. Twenty minutes later, she'd eat. That's crazy, yeah. right? Yep, I give it to my dogs now. So here's and an, my pig and my bird. So here's another advocate for CBD oil for your pets uh, in studio. We didn't even talk about this before coming on, so that's that's good to know. Do you sell CBD oil for for dogs? We do. We sell oils and we sell treats. Okay, there you go. So if you are looking for a local place, if you're in the Fredericksburg, Richmond, Stafford area. Yeah, we sell a lot of it in Richmond because we're next door to an oncologist, the actual the oncologist that helped me with my, with my dogs, and she actually recommends it. She's sent people to us for it. So we sell a ton of CBD at the Richmond store. So Lex, there, uh, there is hopefully the answer to Well, no, your there's question. more though for her. You also, oh, sorry, um, shit, So sorry. for your dog with hip dysplasia, yeah, there's a product called Endure. It's made by Anime. It's actually green lip muscle, glucosamine, shark cartilage, has vitamin C in it. I highly, highly, highly recommend that for dogs with hip dysplasia. Um, that's the first supplement that I started Tala on when she got HOD in her joint. She's a puppy. Um, but my former bull mastiff had a torn ACL. She actually, they said the second one was going to have to be operated on. I started her on Endure, never had to have it um when they actually ran out of it for a little bit there was about three weeks that i didn't have it for my bull mastiff there was a huge difference she was having a hard time getting around we were going to the doctor more for laser therapy for chiropractic as soon as i got her back on the endure she was back to her normal self so get yourself some endure it's the best product out there for hips there you go um so i mean just to kind of summarize all of this it's going to be dog specific Mm -hmm. the the actual diet Um, And if they want to know, and I feel like that's probably the hardest part to this, is trying to find somebody who knows uh, what what you should be feeding your dog, that that specific dog, right? Um, So find a certified pet nutritionist, if able. Go Um, to a store like mine. Go to a store, a local... uh, Don't shop online. Dog, unless you're shopping on dog. I shop online. Well, you know what I mean, though. You support small business. Small business are the people who actually study this. The people who are online don't know anything about your dog. You know, the small businesses do. We love your dog. I mean, like, your dog got a Valentine for me. Yes, you know, yes. I meant to talk to you about small that. Businesses. Thank you. Yeah, Diesel's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Diesel's the best. We love him. Although he was a dick the other night, but that's another story. It. He's well, the sweetest. He didn't know bite work. I, I think say, it's a different dog. When I say he was a dick, he was just being a mouse. So, I mean, that's really all it is. And he goes through his spurts. But anyhow. Um, and then, you know, so find uh, a certified pet nutritionist. Or they don't even have to be certified. No. Just somebody who knows their shit. Yeah, right? go to a small store. This is what we do. We How- take classes from, like, our reps come out and do classes. Like, I have a class next Tuesday. One of the companies is coming out to explain to us everything about their food and why it's fantastic and what dogs it benefits. And I can tell you right now, I already know because I feed it to my beagle because she has pancreatitis. All of their food is 2.5% fat or less. So you want to go to stores like mine. That's what we're here for is to help you find the right food for your dogs. Okay. And, Christina, to answer your question, yes, CBD for anxiety. Um, I Go back to Episode 6 and listen to that. I promise you, you'll, you'll get a lot of information. Uh, it's on iTunes. Um, and what about vets? 
do we, because I'm a firm believer, don't go to a vet if you want dog training advice. I love my vets. Do you go to a vet if you need nutritional advice? Depends on the vet. So I work with two different vets, Dr. Bakarian at Fredericksburg Animal Hospital. Okay. I love her and Dr. Victoria Farthing, and she is the Animal Concord Wellness Center in Stafford. She's a holistic vet. So I have two different vets, and I go to them for everything. And the thing with them is most of their customers are my customers too, and we talk to each other about the dog and what's going on. So it's not only me working with your dog, it's me working with your vet working with your dog. Well, there you go. And then we support raw 100%. Yes. Just got to make sure you do it the correct way. Add in the additional vitamins, nutrients, supplements, everything that your dog needs to make a full balanced diet. Exactly. Right? Not just chicken and rice. And that, that the raw diet doesn't matter on the breed. No. Um, so Yorkies, raw diet. Yeah, absolutely. We actually have a few Yorkies. And it's great for them because they can come in and get a three-pound bag of raw, and that lasts them a while. So it's really affordable to feed a small dog raw. Okay, so raw diet uh, across the board yeah. um, if you can afford it. Um, now, what is better, raw diet uh, out of the grocery store, organic, or going into a shop like Dog Crazy? And because I know you have a freezer dedicated, is it the same we stuff? We have seven freezers in Marcia. <laughs> it, no, it's not the same stuff. Um, like I said, I'm very particular about the brands that I carry. I need to know everything about them. Okay. Um, like you can walk into any, I'll just put it this way if you walk into a store and they carry Beneful and they carry Origin, that store doesn't care about your dog. If you walk into a store and they only have top of the line products, they actually care what goes into your dog's body. Okay. So support stores that actually care, not ones that are just out there to make a profit. Okay. So there you have it. You got to make sure that they carry the best brands. And uh, if they do, then odds are that the food that they are selling is going to be good for your dog. Uh, but then again, it's all about per dog basis, right? Yeah, I mean, I, it's yeah. every, every dog is different. It's figuring out. I feel like I'm lucky. I feel like I'm lucky in the you sense are. that I have five dogs. And they all eat the same food. And they all eat the same food, yeah. and they all uh, love it. They all tolerate it. Uh, they all have hard poop. Yay. Um, shout out to Duty Calls, by the way, for coming out oh, once a I week. Oh, I love them. And they come pick... to my house now, too. as my Christmas present. Oh, man, I love those guys. <laughs> Me, too. And they pick up after my pig and everything. Yeah, they're yeah. amazing. They actually come out here to the facility yard, too, a couple of times a week. So uh, shout out to Duty Calls. If you don't know who they are, look them up. Yeah, it's they worth are... every penny. And it's a nationwide company, so no matter where you live, you probably have one close to you, and it's really cheap. It's super cheap, yeah. and you never have to worry about picking shit up in your yard again. Amazing. Um, because that used to be my kid's job and well, kids are kids, yeah. right? And they leave one or two or 300 turds yeah. sitting in the back and somebody steps in it uh, and then Kelly has to clean it up <laughs> or I step in it and then I clean it up and anyhow, or you just hire duty calls and let yeah, them take care exactly. of you. So, um, all right. So raw diet, no vegan diet for dogs, period. Um, vegetables unless, are unless okay. They have an issue and they need to be on a, on a right vegan diet. well of course and, there's always yeah. exceptions exactly. with everything um but in general not a hundred percent vegan I'm, for a healthy I'm dog not a supporter of it not I'm a supporter not, of it no actually when we because we're going to another uh dog food show so there's uh two or three different shows a year that we go to that are all about dog food we get to meet all the vendors and i won't even walk up to the table when they have vegetarian yeah. food i'm like yeah nope uh -uh. but i mean away. at the same time vegetables are good for your dog Depending. just not a hundred percent of the time right exactly they are carnivores kind of like us i yeah. mean you know uh i shouldn't go there I'll, i'm gonna stir up some shit we so need I'm, protein too i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go there nancy yeah. no, this is the I, dog show me. not the yeah. human show <laughs> i research all diets like i had somebody come to me in september and asked me about keto and i didn't know what effect it would have on a dog's body so i started eating keto myself and I have to get my blood work done to see how my blood levels are, but my blood pressure has gone way down. I've dropped 22 pounds. I mean, it's made a huge difference for me. So. Keto is very popular yeah. right now. I know there's a few trainers in the company that are on keto, and yeah. I mean, they love that shit. They're yeah. losing weight. They're healthy. They yeah. look good, you know? So, yeah, just a little quick plug for a keto diet. So anything else you want to add in about what people should know? Um, just please research your dog food. Take the time. You know, if you have a bag of food and you're not sure if you should be feeding it, call the company. You know, look at the ingredients. Ask them where they get their ingredients from. Ask them who makes it. If it's a big company, you know, look at that company's name and type in that company's name and recalls and see what recalls have been there in the hmm. past. So you know what type of food you're actually feeding your dog. And there are better choices, you know. 
Yeah. And I would have to assume if they stand by their product, they'd be more than willing to talk to you on the phone about their product, right? Yeah. So I would say if you are calling your dog foods company and you're having a hard time getting getting through to somebody um, other than an operator, probably take that as a sign. Yep. There's a few companies that will not tell me who makes their food or where they source their ingredients. That's from. weird, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And that's what I and when people come in and say this is what I feed, it's exactly what I tell them. Well, I called and they would not release their sourcing to me, and that's a big red flag for me. Here, here's a dumb question: Does the FDA monitor? dog food or yes. no they do oh yeah, yeah yeah okay oh yeah okay yeah i didn't know that that's good to know then um and then recalls that was another big topic we we talked about um i guess it's probably safe to say if you have a dog uh food brand that's on recall just stop don't yeah. take the chance stop feeding them either until the recall is over or switch food and find out what the recall was about if it's something simple like we had a recall spinach or romaine lettuce for us we had salmonella in it recently something like that yeah that's not that big of a deal to not me but if there's phenobarbital in the food stop feeding that food say that again if there's phenobarbital in the food stop feeding the food simple as that switch foods sean put that word on the comment so people know what she's talking <laughs> yeah the euthanasia use it i can't say it I hate that word. Euthanasia. <laughs> that drug. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's weird, right? Yeah. No, oh. it's t it's totally normal, actually. It doesn't surprise me at all. See, I, I think that's weird. And I didn't know that's what they did to dogs who you don't get cremated. So. Yeah, you got to figure out what to do with it. Watch Pet Fooled. If you have a moment, it's on Netflix. It's Pet Fooled. It's the best document documentary. It's, it's, it's fantastic. We play it at all our stores all the time. All right, there you have it, guys. Um, if you have any questions uh, that we did not cover today, you are welcome to... You can either email the dog show at info at the dog show podcast.com and I will go to the expert myself, or you can email the expert directly. Um, which is go ahead and say your email one more time, Nancy, if you don't mind. Shop dog crazy, crazy with a K at gmail.com. And I'm happy to answer any questions, so feel free to email me. And she is happy to answer any questions, so that's awesome. We appreciate that for sure. Uh, they will be offering shipping. Yes, Across we already do. We offer shipping now, but not everything that we carry is on our online store Okay, yet. okay, so there you go. So check it out if uh, if you have some questions about what you should be feeding your dog and they carry it, uh, Nancy will ship it to you if, if able to. So um, anything else going on? No, not really. We have a kissing booth tomorrow at what? my at my downtown store. So okay. we're going to be doing. Uh, my realtor actually um, is raising money. Uh, is raising uh, is trying to raise um, supplies for the Orange County um, rescue shelter. So we're actually going to do a kissing booth tomorrow, and all the money is going to go towards Orange County. Plus, we're donating a ton of food to them, a ton of treats. We have tons of stuff we're going to be giving. To you them. guys do a lot of stuff for the community. Oh yeah, that's big time. that's one of the reasons why we love you guys so much. Um, we're heavy into the community as well as you know, so. Uh, we definitely support small businesses that give back to their community any way that they can. So uh, thank you, Nancy, for being here um, from Dog Crazy. Check them out, guys. Dog Crazy with a K dot com. com. Yeah. Um, and then you can go on to their store. I believe there's a link at the top, if I recall. Oh, yeah. It says shop online. And if you go on there, you can see everything we carry. And if it's something I carry, it's something I would bring home to my own dog. So it's something I stand behind 100%. Very cool. And if you guys are local, if you're going to be in the area, Richmond, Fredericksburg, Stafford area, stop by one of their stores. Um, it's not just Nancy. Like a, a lot of her staff has oh, they're amazing. great, great knowledge in um, in in you know pet food yeah. and treats and stuff like that. And uh, super, super great group of people. Yeah. You know, uh, happy to help all the time. So stop by, check them out, um, and bring your dog. And they love dogs. Yeah, we're way Weird. nicer if you have your dog. Weird. <laughs> so bring your dogs and. Uh, all the training goes out the window. I can firmly say that <laughs> Diesel turned into a lap dog uh, on one of the employees as she was laying on the ground. So I just gave up with the uh, commands at that point. I was like, ah, whatever. <laughs> um, so check them out. Uh, again, Frederick's three locations now? Four. 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 Stafford, Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg, and Richmond. There you go. There you have it. Um, as for me, <clears throat> I still have um, Apollo. For the board and train program, he is, I believe, four or five days in right now, off leash, kicking ass, uh, knows all his stuff. Uh, so now we're just working on distraction stuff for the next week and a half. Um, then I'm going to be taking some time off. My man Nick White will be back. Uh, I know I said he would be back for this show because I thought he was going to be back for this show, but he was uh, 
fucking off in Austin. No, he wasn't. <laughs> He's actually he was actually working. So, but he will definitely be back next week. We are going to touch on something that I think uh, is a uh, a topic that everyone needs to listen to, which is anxiety in your dogs. Um, he has some firsthand experience uh, from his trip. Uh, in Austin this week or last week, and I have some firsthand experience in some uh, previous dogs that I've trained. So we're going to touch on that, and then uh, one day we will have a vet come in here and and give their side of of what they think causes anxiety, and you know what they can give your what you can give your dog, stuff like that. So. Uh, as of right now, I will say this CBD oil is amazing when it comes to anxiety for dogs. Again, you just have to find the right dosage. Um, I struggled with that with my shepherd, uh, but once I found it, I did notice that it made a crazy, crazy dramatic difference uh, for the better. So um, definitely check out the CBD oil and research that. And then for the upcoming shows, uh, we do have um, Mr. Uh, Jeff Shedler. Uh, coming in from Georgia K9, I can't recall the date. I believe it's next month, um, which is, I call him the godfather of tracking and trailing. He is who I learned from um, and uh, just a wealth of knowledge. He was a cop for a long time. Now he owns Georgia K9, uh, which has two locations, uh, one in Georgia and one in Edisto Island in South Carolina. So uh, we have him coming. Then we have a... Uh, a working dog photographer coming. Her name is Dawn. I can't recall her last name. Um, anyhow, she's coming in. She's going to talk about some of the work that she does next month. And then we have the owner from Scent Logics uh, scheduled to be on the show and a bunch of more guests. We've got a lot coming up in the next few months. Uh, so stay tuned for sure. If, uh, if you enjoy the show, we, uh, we appreciate your support. Please download the podcast. That's what keeps this going. So go to iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Google Play, we're on Audible, we're on... Uh, the only thing we're not on is stupid Alexa. Alexa will not play the podcast, <laughs> and I, we've submitted it to her, but she will not play the podcast. Maybe it's my Alexa, so I'll figure that out. Either way, uh, the best way to support us is to download the podcast. Uh, you guys have kept us in the top 50 since we started this show. We peaked as high as number five. So thank you, thank you for your support. And uh, we will see you guys next week. The Dead Show With Nick and Joe The Dead Show